Well, howdy and welcome back to the workshop. In today's episode, we are finally, finally getting started on the baby Beaudry power hammer. This is a roughly 1917-1918 Beaudry number two clutch model mechanical forging hammer. It is the baby brother to the big 400 pound number 11 with a couple of differences. The main one is that this does not require a big motor tower like that one does. This is a direct drive motor to flywheel and then you step down on the pedal and it engages the clutch. And so rather than controlling speed and power by tightening the belt with a tensioner pulley, it is engaging a tapered clutch inside the main flywheel here, just like the little giant. I've had this hammer for about a year and a half now. It's just been sitting here staring at me and it has taken every single ounce of patience that I have to not peel off this crusty paint every time I walk by it. But today we're gonna do all of that. We're gonna take the hammer apart we're gonna see what we need to do to it. I already have an idea of a couple of issues that it has that I know I'm gonna to need to fix, but we're gonna make sure that it's mechanically sound inside the clutch system, and make sure that the rest of the hammer is ready to rock and roll. So with that, let's jump on in. Do you guys know why power hammers are so cool? It's because it allows a blacksmith to be able to do more things with less time, much like today's sponsor, Factor. If you have a busy life and you have a lot to get done, oftentimes it's hard to make time to go down to the grocery store, then you have to deal with a mess and all of that junk. Don't get me wrong, I love cooking when I have time for it, but I absolutely do not always have time for it. So being able to throw a delicious, healthy, chef-prepared, never-frozen meal straight from the fridge into the microwave and have something healthy and tasty to eat in two minutes is kind of a big deal. It allows me to get a lot more done in the shop and I don't have to feel bad about spending so much money eating out all the time. And it's great because Factor has you covered no matter what you're dietary restrictions are. They've got keto, gluten-free, vegan, vegetarian. Not to mention they've got all kinds of different meals coming and going all the time, so you don't have to be eating the same thing over and over again. They've got tons of different tasty proteins between fish and meat, along with vegetables and fun things like pastas and all sorts of other good stuff. So if you guys are interested in checking out Factor, go to factor75.com and use code WillStelter50 for 50% off your first Factor box. The link will be downstairs in the bio. Thank you Factor for sponsoring today's episode. With that, let's hop back on in. So first things first is we're gonna get everything taken apart. I'm gonna start off, uh, I think, top and move down. Um, so we're gonna start off by taking off this ugly cage right here. That was probably put on there for OSHA reasons. But before we do any taking apart, I actually wanna start spraying everything down with a little bit of penetrating oil just to hopefully make things a little bit easier and to make it smell nice in here. So as some of you guys may remember, I drove down to San Antonio, Texas to pick this hammer up. I got it from a guy named Andrew Holmgreen. Andrew is a very talented blacksmith down there and he bought it from an artist blacksmith who never actually had the machine running due to one of the issues with it. I think that it probably would run if I were to put it together right now, but I wanna make sure that this thing is gonna be in tip top shape. I don't wanna put it together and then realize that uh, there's a bunch of things wrong with it and then have to go back and do it later. I want to get it done right the first time. It has very clearly had a fairly hard life. They broke one of the springs, which is essential to the main function of the hammer, and they repaired it in a functional but fast way, which kind of indicates they needed to have the hammer running to, to make money with it. Not to mention, these were also very expensive hammers back in the day. Most farm shops had cheaper hammers, um, but these guys were the kind of Cadillacs, the really, really expensive hammers. Let's make sure that we get a little oil on the, the pivot system down there. So this is kind of a hinged system where as soon as I get that bolt off, this guy will actually open up. So it had been stored, I think inside actually, but uh, basically inside in Texas is worse than something being stored outside in Montana um, because it's so humid down there. And now this should just lift. Oh, that is crusty, capital K. All right, so now I should be able to kind of a little bit better explain how this hammer works. Uh, basically, the motor mounts back here. From the factory, it would have mounted straight to this plate right here. This plate is completely square with the frame of the hammer. It's both bolted and it looks like they poured molten lead in there as well to really, really solidify it. It's definitely not moving. It's definitely square. 
that's super cool. Uh, but I guess probably whoever made the modifications, the original factory that bought it after, I don't know, something fell on the motor or broke it or whatever, they made another mounting frame for it to kind of make it a little bit smaller. I will probably go back to the original mounting method just because I can. Uh, but basically from the motor, there'll be a flat slack belt, looks like a four inch wide belt is what it wants to take. And this part of the wheel right here is separate from the front. So the brake of the hammer right here, which is released when you step down on the treadle. I mean, it's pretty frozen right now, as you can tell by the crusty dust coming off of it. When you step down, not only does it push this farther in, but it also releases the brake and allows it to move. That part right there is always spinning as long as the motor is spinning. And then when you step down, it engages those two things and the whole thing starts spinning. Uh, right now, this thing is absolutely chock full of very hard grease. As you guys can see here, there's actually clumps of grease from how much they were greasing this hammer. I like oil. Oil makes things spin freer. Um, it's a lot lighter. Grease, you have to do it less because it's so much stickier, but I prefer to take better care of my hammers and oil it. Uh, sometimes if tolerances inside the hammer are worn out, grease can help take up some of that slop a little bit but uh, I think we'll probably be using oil on this hammer if we can. So the next thing that I wanna do is take off this back cap here. I don't actually know exactly how this system works. And so what I'm gonna do is get the crane over here and have a strap around the free spinning part of the flywheel while I take this off. I don't think it's gonna fall off, but just in case I'd prefer to not break it. Okay, so when that bolt comes off, that plate's coming with it. Look at that, looking good so far. As we're starting to pull this off, we can see some of the wear surfaces on the inside. I wanna make sure that that's not gonna fall out. It doesn't seem like it is. So it looks like this in here is a wearing surface. This is spinning against that uh, and it looks clean. I see a little bit of what I think is supposed to be an oil groove that is completely jam packed full of grease. Um, but this all looks good. I'm not feeling, I feel maybe a little bit of uh, like rusted pitting in here, but I don't feel any hard galling. That's good, that means that the hammer hasn't been run dry, or at least that this part wasn't so affected by it if it was. I think that wheel is not, oh my gosh. Okay, there we go. Alrighty, it looks to me like this is the tapered part of our clutch system, and that means that this is probably also uh, tapered to match. Is that supposed to be rolling? I think this is supposed to be rolling. I probably. Cool. This probably has not been taken apart for over a hundred years. I'm gonna go ahead and loosen the brake on this feller. So you see we got a light gap there. So there's one piece that is not moving with it, right? And I don't know if that bolts, oh, there's the key. Nice, that's coming out nice and easy. Um, now I don't know if that bolts on or something, but I think that we're gonna be able to get a strap in there to make sure that this, whole system doesn't fall apart. Oh. <laughs> Not enough? Oh. Uh, it's moving the whole, like, Oh, look at that. Um, wait, what? Is that threaded? No, that's just a rough lathe pass. Okay. Oh my goodness, wow, look at that. All right, y'all, where is my scraper? Oh my gosh. That's some sticky grease right there. Okay, so if I'm looking at this right, and I'm fairly sure that I am, this is the shaft that goes through. Um, that, that's the fellow that spins with the linkage on the front. This, all it does is because of the taper right here, it pushes that back. This is supposed to sit a little bit farther forward, and when you step down, it pushes that and pulls it back. So all it's doing is controlling the part that is keyed into the shaft, that makes sense. So what we can do now, we can pull out the shaft, we can punch out that pin and pull off this clutch engagement disc. Uh, so let's start by pulling out the shaft here. Noise. 
That's actually a bronze washer that they had in there. No idea if that was original or not. <laughs> is it threaded? Yes, it is. I could have really wailed on that for a long time and had a bad time of it. What a weird little bolt. That is clean. I mean, it's dirty, but it's clean. Oh, ho, 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 ho. oh these are just threaded in here. Look at that. How the heck did they get this round on the outside? Oh my gosh. Oh, crusty. Oh, is that a little cotter pin on this one? There's a little tiny cotter pin right there holding the roller onto the outside. Yeah, it's just been painted over. Basically, these fellers are supposed to spin, and this is the surface that interfaces the frame of the hammer to the pivoting clutch engager. And so rather than having a pin that's rubbing there, they have a roller so that it's gonna be a smooth operation, and it won't uh, wear out quite so fast. <coughs> <laughs> now, an interesting thing to note is that while this is mint colored, it is not mint flavored. <coughs> so I, off camera, wondered if this was frozen because of the paint on it, so I just give it a little tap right there, and then all of a sudden, that boy, free. Free at last, free at last. Mmm, wow. That is some baling wire that some fellers just threw one in there. That's a, a not, notter pin. <sighs> nice, that actually looks really good. They really don't want that coming out. Threaded and pinned. There is our brake linkage. Now that that brake is out of there, this should come up. Oh, look at that. It's almost like they designed this hammer to be able to be serviced and taken apart. This is not what this is supposed to look like. Oh yeah. Oh my gosh. Nice. Again, another cotter pin through some threading. Yeah boy. And that nut is free also. What is going on there? Was someone let loose on this hammer with a torch? A washer right there. It almost looks like they cast it in lead or something. So we will not be taking that part out, I guess. We got this feller here. That'll need knocked out. Oh, I just didn't hit it hard enough. That is definitely a tapered pin. The age old adage really is true. If, if it's not moving, just get a bigger hammer. As a reward for getting out that tapered pin, oh, we'll, we'll decrust some of this. Oh my gosh. Oh, dude, it is crusty back there. Look at this. <laughs> yeah. That is old. Directions for erecting and adjusting the Baudry Champion Power Hammer. The foundation should be built as per blueprint, furnished anvils. What? Now because I've had so much time to get ready to have this hammer, and because I knew that the plaque on that was so beat up, I actually had a guy named Tom Utley, who lives down in Arizona, redo the plaque using the original acid etching method. He made this beautiful brand new plaque along with the nameplate, which was also missing from the hammer. Uh, these are stunning pieces of craftsmanship, totally different from knife making, but absolutely wonderful. He does a great job uh, making uh, new machine tags for tags that were lost. He does functional tags. He does more of the plaques and decorative tags. Uh, so it was cool to go through the process of getting these done up. He did a great job.
Um, unlike my big hammer, the treadle to pivot uh, linkage here, this is kind of an adjustable piece to allow you adjust the height of the treadle. Um, and it is not adjustable on the big hammer and it's been honestly a little bit of a problem. The last big thing that we need to take apart, apart from like the anvil and well, really it's just a sow block in the die, but uh, is this piece right here. All right, I just had an epiphany. I was totally wrong about the way that this thing worked. There's this separate ring that goes around, right? This guy right here. That is separate from the main casting, this piece right here. Uh, the main casting is what has the bore that sits on the shaft, that has the linkage on it. Um, so basically what happens is when you step down on the treadle, this piece over here, it is flipped around in reality, and the side that's down on the table hits this wheel right here, that wheel. And that wheel then, as you push down, pushes out and it expands this ring, which then uh, has a variable level of slip. And so you can control the speed. Oh my gosh, that's so smart. So you push on that, it expands this ring, which then uh, catches on the inside of the flywheel, which is already spinning. And so these pieces right here, you see these square headed bolts, you can adjust those out or in to control how sensitive it is. Because if these are expanded all the way, then this is gonna be pressing in harder into the clutch engagement uh, ring. Now we just need to figure out how to get this apart. Uh, would you hang on to that wrench there? Or, oh, yibbo. Let's get this down on the ground where it can't fall to hurt anybody. Yeah. Okay, I think we found our first or second bad condition piece. Oh my gosh. You know it's bad when it's so dirty that you can't tell what metal it is. <laughs> I don't actually know how much this is gonna help. This is such a thick layer of grease. Okay, I'm thinking about using this needle descaler to see how much working I get done on removing the paint from the frame of the hammer. That works good and I'm gonna put on some eye protection. Well, it's not absolutely necessary that we take off the sow block because honestly, it's lined up, it's in the right spot. It is necessary for us to take off the dies because these fellers are a little crusty and uh, they need to get driven out. No, oh, it's moving. They threw some MIG weld on there and then drove it in. That's terrible contact. Lovely. Lovely die. It's crusty, it's rusty, it's a little bit chipped, but that's a good looking die right there. So we got our bushing off of the crank pin, and it is the piece that sits inside of this guy. This all needs to come apart as well, so let's get that bolt out of there. We'll take out the key that holds that little rat tail gear in there. Mmm, that's so clean. These are the 
little rollers. We're gonna have to make new ones of those because believe it or not, it's actually not supposed to look like that. Uh, and then we've got one good spring arm. And we've got one bad spring arm. Yep, believe it or not, again, it's not supposed to look like that. That can come out. Look at that. Bam. We can take, you know, we can pop out our little block. This is what holds, holds it in. Nice. Now we can take our spring box. That's this guy. And he's got these two giant set screws in there. And that is what puts tension on the springs to give the hammer a whippy action. Oh, I won't complain about that at all. Look at that. There is one stripped thread in there. I don't know if that happened during the life of this hammer, if it maybe happened while they were cutting the threads in originally, because this looks perfect. Um, oh, this is, this is missing some threads and some right there too. It's very possible that it took out, but just, just one thread is missing. Okie dokie. This is the last piece that we need to take apart. This is the ram. Um, this is supposedly a 50 pound ram. This is a 50 pound rated power hammer. In reality, I think that this fellow weighs 94 pounds. I weighed it at a buddy's house in Texas on my way home. We're gonna weigh it again though. 95 pounds. Okay, so now that we've established that it's 100 pounds, let's go get this die out. Okay. All right, so with everything taken apart at this point, we still need to clean up the gib, the crankshaft and crank disc. We need to clean up our weird plate thing. We need to clean up our pitman. We need to clean up our spring box. We need to clean up our uh, brake control arm. And we need to degrease and clean up whatever this is. Oh my gosh. Rather impressive if you ask me. This thing is in pretty good condition overall. Uh, it's got kind of the usual wear and tear for uh, one of these hammers, which is basically the die or the die key can walk out a little bit and start to kind of cut grooves, which is not the best, but I'll just file it flush and, uh, and make it look pretty. Well, that's where we're gonna have to stop it for today's episode. We've got the hammer cleaned up. There's still a lot of gunky grease, uh, both on the hammer and on some of the pieces, but we're gonna have to save that for the next episode. I hope you guys stay tuned to follow along with this 1917, 1918, not exactly sure, Beaudry number no. two, power hammer restoration. It's a real treat to be able to work on a machine like this. I hope you guys enjoy uh, getting to see the process. With that, thank you so much to our sponsor Factor for sponsoring today's episode and to our patrons for patronizing us. With that, I will see you guys on the next one. Bye-bye.